Hello and welcome to the tutorial video for creating and submitting a fleet for the Grand Star Sector Tournament. So the description for the video will cover the timestamps and detailed explanation of what's going on in the video. I just want to keep the introduction brief because long tutorial video intros are awful. So if we open the game up here, we can as we have the AI Battles mod installed, which is provided by Tardiflet for the tournament. If you haven't installed and you go to missions, the PvP mission is the one that will be being used for the tournament. As long as you have this, then you're good to go. So going back outside of the game, we have to go to our files for the game. And if you go to the mod installation path, AI Battles, they, um, they're the two big folders that are important to keep in mind first off are PvP and PPVP which will be the, the PvP folder will be used for this current round, whereas all subsequent rounds will use the other folder. So if you open up PvP, you will then see that there's player data and player fleet with every number. The number refers to the number in the inscription sheet over here in the Star Sector Tournament uh, inscription page. Uh, and simply for the guide, we're going to use player one. So if you open up these folders using a notepad program of your preference, um, I already have them open over here. This is what player one data and player fleet look like. Player fleet data is very straightforward. It's basically just naming you the player and your fleet. So you have the name, tag, and prefix as outlined in the first row. This is what you actually edit down here in the eighth row. So the first part as shown on the top is the name. That's your name. So guide video will be the name. So the tag then, which is the name for your fleet that as it explains in this row the name of your fleet so we'll do guide fleet and then the prefix is what precedes the name of all your ships when they're actually deployed in the mission if you see over here in the game they're prefixed by p1 and there's player one listed over here next to the budget going back to it we're going to change it to guide video fleet next we're going to save the file and if you go back to the game and click on the mission to reset it or refresh it, it already updates. You do not need to reset the game in order to update this part of the, of the files. Next we'll go to the Player One Fleet CSV, where we see the breakdown of the fleet. On the top row is the key for the um, data. We have the row number on the, we first have the row number, then we have the round number, the variant name, the personality assigned to the ship, which will be the officer personalities, and whether or not the ship is a flagship. It is all explained in rows 3 4, seven, through 7 as well. And as mentioned here, do not rename the file or change the top line because this is the key not only for you, the user, but also for the file reader. So here we have each ship has its own, identi own unique row number as its first value then a comma, and then the round number that it has, in this case either one or two. Uh, the first round is what we'll be building for. The round two ships, as you see then, do not actually appear here in game. Only the round one ones do. The next is the, near, the variable for the variant name, which all these lashers are the lasher assault build, which is from the base game. And there's a Condor Strike that's in round two, which we do not see in the current round. We would have to change files, which you shouldn't really be playing with, just to make a fleet. Then the Officer Personality, and with another flagship again. So, if we want to make a change to this, primarily what we'll be changing is changing the variant name. We can also simply, in order to remove ships from the fleet, we can say remove all the round two ones. Uh, as well as this one round one lasher over here. Just delete that and then save the file. And if we refresh it, we'll have four lashers. Simple enough. Now, if you want to add a ship, then you do the same thing. You just say an easy way to do it is just copy paste the previous line. If you want to do an extra version, let's say let's add two more. So we'll do six and seven. Make sure that the row number is always unique. That determines not only the ID number of the ship, but also where it spawns when the AI deploys it. Now we have six lashers. If you want to start a new variant in, we have two options. 
One of the options which will probably be used the most is if you go to the files for Star Sector, go to uh, Star Sector Core in this case because we're using vanilla ships. Otherwise, you'd go to the mod um, in question that you're using. Go to data, variants, and then say we want to add a dominator. We'll go to here in the dominator folder of variants, and we have all of the dominator variants that are built into the game. So let's replace our flagship with a dominator assault. And we will save the file. And then refresh the game. And there we go, we have a dominator. Again, you don't need to reset the game for this. However, if you go into the refix screen and take one of these lashers, drop blast doors for, say, integrated targeting unit, as well as insulated engine assembly, simple change, let's uh, do something a bit more distinct then. Let's rename it Guide. That'll be a good flag. And then you click away. Just click on any other ship in the refit screen. It'll save. Now it says Guide on the left over here. If we back out and then go to the files again, it, this doesn't change anything here. We have to then change it in the files. And in order to find the file for the ship we just made, we have to go back to the Star Sector folder go to saves, missions, and then the mission that we edited in. In this case, it was the PVP mission itself. And now it has an auto, the, this is the ship that we just generated, which if we open with our notepad program, we can confirm it's a lasher with the whole ID. It has, as we see in the uh, refit screen, just to confirm it. It has heavy armor, targeting, ITU, and insulated engine assembly, as shown here as well and it's got the guide display name as seen over there. So what we need to do with this then is we need to rename it to something. The variant ID on row 13 usually it'll it'll vary so just look for the variant ID as it shows here. Do not remove the quotations for this. We need to rename the ship and we'll rename it to say guide lasher just something generic and save it. It's important that you prefix the name of the ship variant because that will make sure that all of your variants will be ordered in the same area of the folder. It's a lot easier for just organization and it removes the chance of any like discrepancy between players' fleets. Next, we're gonna have to close this because we need to rename the, full, the file itself to also guide flasher. Now, the name in the file, if we reopen it, the name for the file has to match the variant ID. If it doesn't match it, it won't be recognized. So now we can take this, we can cut or copy the, full, the file, go to the mod, the AI Battles mod, go to data this time, and then the variants folder. And anywhere in the variants folder, we will paste the variant in. Now we have the guide lasher variant file inside of the game. Now if we want, we can take the lashers we have already built in, put in one or maybe even two guide lashers. Then we save it. And once we go back to the game, exit out the refit screen and refresh the mission, now it's broken. It doesn't, the game will not recognize a newly installed variant file. So in order for this to update, we have to restart the game, which we will do now to test that it works. And of course, you can restart the game. You you know how that happens. Play it. Now it's important to mention that the if you're going to be restarting the game repeatedly, it's good to thin out how many mods you have enabled because the more it is, the, the longer it's going to take a load. While this loads, however, I'm going to show you how to look up the budget of specific ships. So if you go to Star Sector Core, or the, again, the mod uh, that you're using if you're using a faction mod, go to Data, Holes, then there will be two files of use in here. There will be ship data and wing data. Ship data is used for the hulls themselves, so like the, the lasher, the omen, dominator, things like that. Wing data is for fighters. And if you go to the weapons, there will be a weapon data as well. Now, the importance of this file is that if I open it, I already have it open here. It's a spreadsheet file. It's the CSV, same as the other files we were just editing, but whereas in those cases it's easiest to edit it in a notepad, 
For this, you really do want to note the uh, spreadsheet document. So say we want to look up the value of a omen class frigate. I have it highlighted here already, just readability, so we know it's in the 33rd row. And if you scroll up, we're looking for the base value of the ship, that is the cost in credits of the item. So if we scroll to the right until we find base value, which I have highlighted here, and if we scroll down to the omens row, 11,000 credits, that's how much the omen costs for the reference of the budget. And then if we scroll over a bit more, we have supplies rec and supplies month. Supplies rec is the supplies it costs to recover the ship, and supplies month is how many supplies the ship costs per month in upkeep. The maintenance fee for the tournament is calculated by adding up these two values for the omen, that's 5 per recovery and 5 per month, and then multiplying that value by 1,000. So for the omen, that's 5 plus 5 equals 10, times 1,000 is 10,000. That means it has a 10,000 credit maintenance cost. Some ships will have different values in these as well as whole mods such as high maintenance which increases the recovery cost of supplies for a ship or other whole mods from other mods will adjust these prices after the files so it's important to always confirm your budget. Now if we go back to the game and we go to the missions and go back to the PvP mission now it works. Now we notice the budget is much higher than it was when we started. If we launch the game launch the mission anyway and then important when uh, streaming and otherwise playing don't don't deploy all manually because that might change the spawn order just press cancel and then unpause also leave map and go to free cam you know how to do it it's control to switch out the camera now once you're here you can pause it and alt tab again get out of the game and if you go to the star sector files once more go to star sector core and open up the star sector log file whatever that may be and I'm going to full screen this because it's big scroll all the way to the bottom now at the point of the of the mission starting you'll notice by seeing this little banner total fleet value is most easily seen it's calculating the budget cost of the fleet in this case it's calculating both the competitors in the fleet so this fleet value refers to the Buffalo fleet, as you can see by the fact that it's listing all the buffaloes. If we keep scrolling up in this case, there's, as it's titled here, HAL 9000's budget breakdown. If we keep scrolling up until we see the top, guide videos budget breakdown. The log will then break down underneath it the ships and all of their weapons and hull mods. So if we look at the Lasher Assault, which is one of the vanilla variants, it has a so the monthly supply cost for 4,000 plus monthly another 4,000, so the full maintenance is 8,000 8, credits. The base hull cost is 9,000 and it has a weapon fee of 14.25. Also it added the heavy armor and blast doors hull mods to the list of hull mods bought this round. So the Lasher's total cost is calculated without the maintenance because it is not, as it says here, it is ignored this time, is 10,425. Other, the other ships, such as the Guide Lasher, which adds the tar ITU and Integrated Targeting Assembly, they add the other whole mods to the list. Otherwise, it's the same cost because nothing was actually changed cost-wise. Whereas the Dominator is a flagship. It is the flagship, so only the maintenance cost applies. So it only calculates the maintenance fees. It doesn't calculate whole mods, weapons, anything like that. So then the total sum is 102,000 102, credits plus a next round maintenance of 90,000. The whole mods, though calculated below it, as we see here, are listed here, with a total value of 17,500. There's an anti-spam rule, which means that there's so many lashes that they are actually becoming more expensive, so there's a increase in the value. And all of this adds together to a total fleet value of 122,325. This is very useful if you want to figure out why your fleet costs so much more than you think it should, or maybe less than it should. Um, generally speaking, you want to try and get your fleet budget to as close to the allowed budget that you have available, so it makes sense to consider the log. Okay, so now we have a functioning fleet. We don't have to watch the battle here. We can exit out. 
We've tested it, it works. So how to submit the fleet is rather simple. You go to the Star Sector mod AI Battle and then PvP to get your player one data and fleet files. You're going to copy these, don't cut them because you're probably gonna to want to use them. Go back to wherever you want. Um for the instance of this video, I'm just gonna make a new folder. Name it. So mission, guide submission and then put it inside of this. Then I need to get the variants that were used. The Dominator variant and the Lasher Assault variant were both vanilla variants, so they do not need to be submitted. However, the any, any variants that you added this round to the variants pile needs to be added. So this Guide Lasher, which again, is prefixed guide or whatever your username, other unique prefix you want. This one, again, copy it go to the folder that was used and paste it in. So again, do not put any ships that were from part of the base game or any ships that you had already submitted in previous rounds into this. The organizer already has them and it just makes it overcomplicated and it risks people, say, cheating by editing a variant but submitting with the same name. So now we have these three. We were going to archive, which means basically putting it in a zipped folder. I use 7-zip, but you can use whatever whatever application you're comfortable with. So now this is our submission. We then go to Discord, go to the organizer, which in this case is Oryxon, and ignore that this is the videos that I, as I'm recording them. Uh, passport, Star Sector, there we go. And then the submission. Here ya go! Exclamation point. Upload. There we go. Now you have a functioning fleet submission. The organizer will tell you if anything went wrong with your submission, but they need time to do that, of course. So please submit your fleets before, like, like uh, with a good amount of time before the deadline. The earlier, the better, basically. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you all have good luck with your fleets, and by all means. Above all else, have fun.